This is my current resume, but it didn't always look like this. Over the last six years, I've made many changes, and in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how I use ChatGPT to make my best resume yet. I'll be going through how I use ChatGPT to analyze job ads to pull out the most important information, what prompts I use to produce effective dot points that will hook hiring managers, and also how to create an executive summary that highlights all of your key abilities. I've made a couple of videos now on resumes and portfolios, and even given out my own resume as a template and through these thousands of views, downloads and feedback comments, I've learned a lot about resumes. Today I'll be sharing what I've learned so you won't have to make several beginner useless resumes like I did and you'll be able to go straight to making a resume that will actually lend you a job. And with AI, it's never been easier. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first up, let's talk about the layout. My current resume is one and a half pages long and is broken down into four different sections. The title block, overview of abilities, education and experience. I've recently changed the structure of my resume to a one column format so that I could bring more attention to my experience section. But if you like the look of a two column format and you don't have a lot of experience, splitting things up like this into two columns is a good alternative and will allow you to fill up one complete page. Either way though, don't stress too much about the layout at the start because once you've filled out all these different sections, you can play around with things and just do whatever fits your information better. Now, the title block on my resume is pretty straightforward and here I've just got my name, job title, my email, phone number, a link to my LinkedIn profile, and also the location that I'm based in. I think all this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, so let's move on and cover the next section, which is education. In this section, I've just got the name of the university that I graduated from, the name of the degree I did, the time frame that I was there, and then in a couple of dot points below, I've just highlighted a few of my academic achievements. Now, obviously, if you've done a bachelor's degree and then you've gone on to do further education, like a master's, you should include both of these degrees in this section, but something that you should not include is your high school education. I think that it's pretty safe to assume that if you've gone to do a bachelor's degree or even more, you probably graduated from high school. And even if you didn't, you've probably gone on to do some sort of bridging course before even going to university. In any case though, this type of education isn't particularly unique or is something that's going to make you stand out. So the general consensus is, is that you shouldn't let it take up any space on your resume. All right, now let's move on to arguably the most important part of any resume, which is experience. In this section, I have four experiences and I've put them in chronological order with my most recent experience at the top. For each experience, I've included the company name, my job title, the location, and also the time frame that I was there. Under each title, I've included a few dot points that describes what I did, how I did it, and where possible, what the result was. Now, how I go about deciding and how I actually go about creating each of these dot points is by following a three-step process. Step one is that I make a list of all the important skills that someone hiring a structural engineer would be looking for. And this is where ChatGPT starts to come into things. To do this, I go to LinkedIn and use the job search tool to find a bunch of structural engineering jobs that have a decent description and ones that I'd actually like to apply for. Now, for each of these descriptions, one by one, I would go and copy them out and then head over to ChatGPT. Once I've got the description inputted, I would then use the exact prompt I'm about to share with you to find the key skills that they are wanting. I would write, for the below engineering job description, summarize in dot points the key skills that are required. If applicable, include which specific elements or project types they want applicants to have structural design and analysis skills in, what programs they want applicants to be familiar with, and also any necessary soft skills. Once I have a list for each job description, I then use ChatGPT to combine them and remove any duplicate dot points. All right, and step two is to highlight all the skills from this list that I know that I have. For some skills, I'm sure this will be really easy and you'll be able to highlight them straight away, but for some, you might have to think back hard. So be sure to look back at some of your past projects to try and jig your memory. Also, as an intern or a young engineer, it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna have all the skills that the job description is asking for, so don't worry if you can't highlight them all. Okay, and step three is to turn each skill that I've highlighted into a dot point that I can add to my resume. Now to do this effectively, you want to group certain skills together and you want to stick to the what, how, and result structure if possible. For me personally, I've found that most structural engineering dot points are only what, how dot points, so the prompt I've been using to create mine is this. Create a dot point for my structural engineering resume using the following structure. The first part of the dot point is to explain what I did, and the second part is to explain how I did it. What I did is design multiple steel portal frames, and how I did it is using space gas and hand calculations. And if we look at the output, ChatGPT wrote, 
designed multiple steel portal frame structures by utilizing space gas for analysis and performing hand calculations to validate results. I actually really like this dot point as is and don't think it needs any further editing, but as you make your way through all the skills on this list, you may need to run this prompt a couple of times to get things sounding right, or even just put the final editing touches on it yourself. Now, if you do have multiple experiences on your resume like I do, I would suggest trying to distribute your dot points somewhat evenly across each of your roles, and I would also suggest just making sure that you're not repeating any of your skills across any of your dot points. All right, now this process works if you've done a few internships or had a few jobs, but what do you do if you've got no engineering work experience? Well, in my opinion, the best thing that you can do is highlight the experience you've gotten from either your university projects or your personal projects. A university project is pretty self-explanatory and this is just something that you've worked on while at university and maybe this was even a group project. And on the other hand, a personal project is something that you've done in your own time, either just for learning purposes or for something to put on your resume. If you are struggling to find inspiration for what sorts of things you can do personal projects on, one way to come up with a few ideas is to again refer to engineering job descriptions or otherwise you can check out the video I recently made on personal projects which will definitely give you some ideas. If you're interested in checking out that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video, but I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. For those of you that haven't heard of Skillshare, it's the largest online learning community for creatives. On Skillshare, there are thousands of classes led by industry experts across things like design, marketing, productivity, and more. Each class consists of a pre-recorded series of bite-sized lessons that you can complete at your own pace. Most classes take a learn by doing approach to teaching where members are encouraged to create a project while taking the class and often at the end of the class people share their project with the community and get feedback. For engineers in particular, I think the classes on things like Excel, communication and productivity are really well matched. I've recently been taking a class by Ali Abdal on productivity to get some tips on things I can be doing better and already I'm starting to put some of these things into action and I'm noticing a difference. Anyways, if you're interested in giving Skillshare a go, be sure to use my link in the description as the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial where you get full access to all of their classes. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. All right, and next let's go through my overview of abilities section. In this section, I've tried to give the reader everything that they would need to know about my professional abilities in just five dot points. This is actually a new addition to my resume and the reason I decided to add this section is because I've learned that having a summary at the start actually gives the reader an option to read those five dot points and then stop. And you might be thinking, well, why would I want the reader to read only five dot points and stop? I want them to read my entire resume. Well, here's the thing. If a hiring manager has a stack of resumes to get through, they really don't want to read many of them at all. So if you can hook the reader within those five dot points, you are way more likely to have your resume shortlisted and then actually have it read all the way through. And for the hiring managers that actually do read every resume all the way through, this section shouldn't affect them. So I think it's a win-win situation. In any case though, the way I've created these dot points is by using this prompt. Below is a description of all my prior work experience. Produce a concise professional summary of my abilities in five to six dot points that I can put at the start of my resume that will position me as a well-rounded engineer. Similar to before, this output will likely get you 85% of the way there and you'll just need to put the human touch on it and any final bits of editing. All right, and next I wanna to briefly touch on my portfolio. For those of you that don't know what a portfolio is, it's basically a short booklet that showcases your work and the idea is, is that the reader can get a better understanding of the quality of the work that you produce by actually taking a look at some of your past work. Simply put, in your resume, you're trying to use words to explain how good you are in your work, and in your portfolio, you're actually trying to show it. If you're watching this video and you currently don't have a portfolio, this is something that you should seriously consider making, because especially in the civil engineering related disciplines, no one's really doing this. So this is really gonna make you stand out. Now, I won't be going through the specifics of how I made my portfolio in this video, because I've done that in another video, but I will quickly summarize it. So for each project, I included about three images. With these images, I've tried to have a bit of variation and include screenshots from the architectural drawings, as well as analysis programs and also hand sketches. Under each set of images, I've explained in a couple of dot points what I had to do, 
how I did it, and where I could, what the results were. When you make your portfolio, if you do have any photos from site, I think it would be really good if you could show them here too, so you could do a bit of a project timeline. I think if you had one photo of a sketch or some sort of architectural drawing, and then one photo of a software program with an analysis model, and then one photo of the thing actually being built, that would be a really good layout. Obviously though, if you don't have any photos from site, that's totally fine too, just show what you have. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy Enjoyed, you might like this video here where I show you how I made my portfolio in a lot more detail. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.